Hey, if you love purples as much as I do, then this is for you. I make weekly art videos and in this video, I'm going to be sharing some of the interesting purple watercolors that I have in my collection. And for argument's sake, I'm not going to be including the obvious choices like the imperial purples and the mineral violets. Instead, I'm going to pick some of the choices that I think I had neglected a little bit up until now. I'll be sharing primarily the watercolors as well as some of the mixed media supplies that I like to use to complement them and some interesting out of the box mixes that I like to use my purples for. I have an art membership and as part of my Happy Mail tier I am sending out watercolours each month and this has led me to start experimenting with some of my colours a little bit more. As a result I have felt even more inspired to look at my art collections and really explore them deeper. If you would like to be a member of my art membership or receive the Happy Mail that I send then be sure to check out the description. If the spaces are filled then I will leave the waiting list again. Some of these watercolours that we're going to be swatching out in this video I am also going to be sending out to my members so consider this as a like kind of spoiler but I'm not going to tell you exactly which ones I'm sending out just in case you want to be surprised but with no further ado let's do a deep dive into these beautiful purples okay so let's start swatching out these purples because I <laughs> messed up here I'm going to start with this one which is Senelier's Red Violet it is made up of PV16 it is a beautiful beautiful purple it's odd though because i don't feel like i've seen this pigment very often so i didn't quite know what exactly to expect but it's really nice and we'll see how that dries and if it granulates and what happens with that then let's go to the top so we have isaro's purple deep which is made up of pv23 and what a beautiful color it is look at that it's nice it's deep it's rich it's a bluey purple with hints of red and this is for me I guess quite typical of, of dioxazine purples which is what PV23 usually is it's just a really nice bright and pretty often non-granulating purple this entire first row is dioxazine purple <laughs> because that is one of my favorite purple colors then here we have Senelier's dioxazine purple so this will be a good opportunity for us to compare all the different dioxazine purples the off the bat the isaros purple seems darker and deeper and the senelier version is a little bit more gentle lighter if i add some water here for the isaro then you'll be able to see that the hues are quite similar what i'm going to do is take some more from the tube of the senelier to see if it gets any darker so yeah, it can get darker, but I think that the Isaro one is a bit richer and deeper. Then we have Cause, and also the Isaro one had a bit of movement to it, which I wasn't expecting, but that was a pleasant surprise. Then we have Cause Dioxazine Purple. The reason I thought of movement is because Core quite often does move, as you can see here. So if I add water just there at the bottom, then you can see the colours just following it straight and moving water water and as soon as it touches there you can see that and that is the beauty of core again a really nice deep rich purple all with the same pigments but behaving ever so slightly differently beautiful then here we have Windsor and Newton's dioxazine violet this one is the Cotman range so let's see no issues with the color Lovely. Perhaps the colour payout again is a bit less than the professional range that we've just tested out. And the colour isn't quite as rich as the professional range. I'm going to get the tube out and then try and get some more pigment and see if that makes a drastic difference. I find PV23 usually to be quite an affordable pigment, which is why, despite it being so... Yeah, so you can get it a bit richer. Despite it being like a really beautiful bright color you can quite often find it in affordable sets or student sets as well with the actual pigment and as you can see it is lovely thus far the isara deep purple and the core are my favorite let's continue next we have holbein's permanent violet which again is pv23 and let's see because i put the dots we also get a small indication as to how they re-wet again re-wet nice and easy with Holbein, where you put it is where you stay. 
And there we go. The dioxazine purple that we know and love. Called dioxazine, or it's called permanent violet in Holbein, but it's the same pigment as the dioxazine violets and dioxazine purples. Next we have Daniel Smith's dioxazine violet. So this is Daniel Smith's and that is rich. It feels bluer than the other ones that we've swatched thus far. That is stunning. It's nice, deep, dark, rich. Nice and easy to water down. Let's get a gradient so that we can see. That is beautiful. They're all so beautiful and there are such subtle nuances between them. Then this is Rembrandt Spark Violet. <laughs> Obviously, I thought it was going to be completely different because the actual um, bottle, and I feel like the swatch I had seen was a violety colour, so I thought it'd be a sparkly violet. Whereas in fact, I'm not seeing much violet in this. It just looks uh, like a, a shimmering colour with maybe like the smallest tinge of violet. So I suspect it might be a color that it would be nice to maybe experiment with it on top of something else, but not on its own. It is going to shimmer though, so we'll see that once it dries. Then we have Rembrandt's Dusk Pink, which is made up of PR122 and PBK11, also granulates. We'll see how it does that as it continues to dry. If you are enjoying this video, don't forget to hit the like button and to consider subscribing. It makes a huge difference to my channel and I really, really appreciate it. And then we have Rosa Gallery's Violet Black, which is made up of PV19, PBK7 and PR120. This is quite opaque. Let's see. It's reminded me of Rembrandt's Dusk Pink a little bit, perhaps deeper richer, darker. I'm gonna water it down so that we can see how it dries. Swatching this makes me feel like I don't know the difference between violet and purple and whatnot. And then we have Rosa Gallery's Quinn Violet, which is PV15 and, sorry, PV19 and PB15. This is a beautiful color. I love purples and these purples right here are my favorites still unsure about these this three but all the rest absolutely stunning i think this is one of my favorites as well from what we've swatched so far then we have my merry blue quinn violet which is pv55 and again beautiful bright rich color quite similar to the quinn violet although it's made up with what I believe is usually quite an expensive pigment, PV55. So it's single pigment, but it does really resemble Rosa Gallery Quinn Violet, which is a lot cheaper. Apart from the fact that the Rosa Gallery one is perhaps a bit warmer, so the My Mary Blue Quinn Violet, it leans a little bit more towards blue. Whereas the Rosa Gallery one is a little bit pinker. And then we have White Knight's Quinn Lilac. Now I put the smallest, oh, the smallest amount here, but look at that payout. Wonderful. Again, pinker than I thought it would be, but still really, really nice. And then, pleasant surprise, the Sennelier Red Violet PV16 is granulating, which I didn't think it would. And then we have Amethyst by Daniel Smith. And let us see, this looks super moody. This is wonderful. This is actually a color that wasn't really on my radar until um, Sarah Burns had mentioned it in one of her videos about her Daniel Smith palette. And as a purple lover, I figured it would make a wonderful addition to my palette. Dark, it's deep, it's moody, it's granulating, and I don't know if it's gonna have a little bit of sparkle or shine. We shall see. As those dry, I am going to swatch out some of the Neo Color 2s that I have, as well as the acrylic ink that I have, that again is in the purple family. Just in case, like me, you also love mixed media. So the Neo Color 2s, in case you haven't seen them before, they are water-soluble crayons. So you can use them in their dry form, but you can also add water to them and activate them. So that's why I'm going to do two swatches so that we will see them dry and then we can also see what they look like once we add water. So this very first one is violet and then we have lilac 
and I find it's helpful to do the swatching because there are really so many colors that look quite similar initially they have quite a few different ones so it's worth seeing then this is mauve and this one I wasn't going to swatch it because initially looking at the crayon I can see that it's not really the same kind of colors that we're going for however because it is called purple violet it could be one that if someone doesn't see the swatch someone may be expecting a slightly different color so that's why I think it's worth doing a swatch as well. So this is purple violet because it doesn't really look like either to me. It looks quite pink, which is fine. It's a nice color. It's just the name doesn't feel as accurate. And then this is purple lake, which is one of my favorite acrylic ink colors at the moment. So this very first one is a violet. And as you can see, as they dilute, they also get a lot lighter you can go over them a number of times to kind of try and build up the color but at least first pass this is what it looks like then we have lilac which is this one here and as you can see when you reactivate it it turns into this really bright pretty pinky color then we have mauve which looks like a pastel when reactivated here we have purple violet which resembles lilac quite a lot, is just a pink, a very bright pink, <laughs> despite being called purple violet. And then this little swatch here is purple lake, which is an acrylic ink. If you have watched any of my past videos where I share my most used watercolours or my watercolour palettes, then you will probably have noticed that I don't always have purples. More times than not, what I tend to have is like a pinky red as well as like a deep dark blue in order to mix really nice, lovely, rich purples. And this is a page of me just exploring and demonstrating for my Kofi members how using different reds and different blues yields to different kinds of purples. I love the purples on their own, especially the PV23s. I think that they are absolutely stunning. However, it can be nice to look at some of the more unique mixes that you can get with purples so that you know your range and you know, I guess, what role it could play if you are using it in a limited palette. Here are some of the interesting mixes that I have tried with my PV23 watercolors. So one of the first mixes that I quite like is trying to mix it with a the red. And then you end up making these really lovely, almost like wine reds. I'm just diluting it with water so that you can see how it changes more and more. And the red that I'm using is Madder Red, which is a mixture of reds. So that's what it looks like on its own. And then just mixing it with the PV23. As you can see it poking through there as we lean more purple. And if you almost like do mixes on the paper or slightly less perfect mixes then it's almost like you're getting a granulating effect because you can see bits of the red as well as bits of the purple being separate so again a really really nice mix another mix that you can try is mixing it with a turquoise color so i have this which is pb28 by rosa gallery and it's a nice light sky blue and when mixed with PV23, it gives you, again, just a really nice wide range of bluey, purpley leaning colours. So that's one, leaning quite heavily on the purple. And then if I add a bit more, adding a little bit more of that teal, some more of that teal. And you just get a really nice, beautiful range. Another colour that kind of gives you, again, a really beautiful range of options when mixing is... A secret gem that I feel just has incredible mixing potentials and that is emerald green also called phalo green pg7 and again you can get some really nice dark dark by mixing these two together so that's leaning more towards green and then if I add more of the pv23 we're heading to an almost black color really beautiful and then if you water it down a little bit you can see the colors there. So these are just some of the mixing options that you can get. Here are the close-ups of some of the stunning purples that we have swatched out, as well as some of the interesting mixes that I have tried with my PV23 watercolors. 
I didn't want to say exactly which colours I'm going to be sending out, but rest assured some of them have been featured in this video. So if you would like to receive watercolour samples or if you'd like for us to create together and be part of an art community, then be sure to check out my art membership. If you are still watching, then you are a real MVP and I really, really appreciate you and I would love to know more about you. So let me know that you are still watching by telling me what your favourite purple colour is. If you enjoyed this video, then you will definitely love this series of next ones where I swatch some of my favourite 30 watercolours. And that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.